Well, I was unaware that uh, people would try replicating this. Uh, as you can see in my first video, I didn't call for replicators at this time. Uh, I need to present a few gotchas then if you're going to d attempt this. Uh, as I used to say in Hawaii when I was there, if you talked about somebody, you were talking stink, and I don't want that to happen. So let me tell you some of the gotchas. Uh, obviously, I have not posted a schematic on this, although there is one running around. So for those of you who have that schematic, let me explain a couple of things and also where the, the primary gotchas are. First off, don't try hooking this thing to a supercapacitor. I mean, this particular unit here will not charge that supercapacitor, and you're wasting your time. You're going to have to have a bigger implementation of it. Start out with a small capacitor, say 10 microfarads, because you're going to see the response faster that way. If you use something larger, like a 100 or a 470, it may be slower. You may not see the response because of the self-charging effect of some of the capacitors. Also use clean, fresh, new capacitors. Don't use something that's been sitting in your parts box for, for years. If you have a capacitor with high leakage current, you're going to have problems. If you have a capacitor which has changed values and you want to calculate how many joules are in there, you're going to have problems unless you can actually measure, measure that capacity. So start out with a small capacitor, probably about 10 microfarads would be a good place to start, and use it until you've got the handle on what you're doing and can see the response. Then as you improve things, you can move up to the larger capacitors. Now another thing, for you that have that schematic, or those that have looked at Dr. Wilhelm Reich's work, you will find, or have form an idea of what's in here. Now let me explain to you that no matter how big these plates are, that is not where the action's occurring. The action's actually occurring down here between the magnets, where the magnet, magnetic force is the strongest through the material. These plates up here, nothing's happening at the edges. You can see actually, you can see some of the plates here because they've separated. In the last video when I clamped them together, I bent them, and they're not nicely formed anymore, but that's immaterial. The action's here between the magnets. Now, that also gives you another point of interest, and that is if you're going to scale this thing up, you're going to have to have more magnets on, a, on plates, or you're going to have to have a large plate, put numerous magnets on those plates, but now you're going to run into a conflict which took us quite a bit of time to solve, is as you start stacking magnets, you're going to have this attractive force between them. And in some way, you've got to put separators to handle that problem. But right now, if you're going to play with this, this basic unit, like I say, the gotchas are the capacitors, the quality of the capacitors, the size of the capacitors. And here, here's a 10 microfarad. I was working with the 100 in the first video. And you can see how much faster a 10 microfarad will charge in comparison to the uh, 470 that I was using. I'm sorry, I wasn't using the 470, I was using the 100. So you can see that this will uh, charge much more rapidly for you and give you a much easier understanding of what's going on before you have total frustration over it all. So those that are replicating this, uh, take your time. Don't try to reinvent the wheel here. Start out with what I'm showing you. Start out with what uh, you may know from the background. And go ahead and, and uh, proceed from that standpoint. Also, if you look at this from the quantum standpoint, it's totally different than if you look at it from uh, a current RF perspective because the actual action that's taking place in here, if you look at it from current theory and consider the wave and a frequent that wave having a frequency, the spacing between those plates has a significant effect on the outcome. 
So if you have large separators between your plates, you're going to have less response because you're looking at a totally different area of the energy. So it's critical that uh, the spacers in here are correct. And what I use is a film that is one thousandths of an inch thick. That's my spacer. So anyway, uh, just thought I'd throw that in there because I've been receiving a few emails uh, from some long-time replicators and experimenters out there. And I wanted to ensure that I covered that and it's much easier to do it in a 